Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Grandma Dorothy, everyone else. Good to be back today. Uh, and let's get started with our positive confession. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The rest of my life is the best of my life. God's favor surrounds me like a shield. Out with the old, in with the new, these hands are anointed to prosper. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Thank you, Father, for giving me the desires of my heart and establishing my plans. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. If God be for me, who then can be against me? Yea, God. Okay, this is a good one today, folks. God's love, God loves the challenge of a, of, of a, oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Birthing the miracle of grace at ground zero. The unpleasant truth is that much of the work of character development takes place near what we might call our personal ground zero. Scientists coined this term around 1946 to describe the point at which a nuclear explosion occurs. I am using the term, re term to refer to the center of origin of rapid, intense, or violent activity or change, the very beginning square one. More recently, this term was used to refer to the p p place of devastation left after the tragedy of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center in New York City. This scripture reading is 2 Corinthians 9, and that says... But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast glad, most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Well, I needed that one today, huh, Mom? <laughs> Have you noticed in your pursuit of God that personal failure and des desperation often cause God to draw near while satisfaction in personal accomplishments or claims of personal holiness seem to repulse him God told the Apostle Paul point blank my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness Paul immediately added therefore God gladly therefore most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the grace at ground zero principle in one concise statement. Unfortunately, many Christians seem to overlook this passage in their study of God's word. Would you be willing to wait in line to hear a message or a sermon about boasting in your affirmities? I've noticed that very little spiritual growth occurs during our stays on the mountaintops of life. Pink clouds. <laughs> Growth seems to explode, however, every time we struggle with sin or wrestle with God in the valleys and lowlands of human, human frailty. This is his way of birthing a miracle at ground zero in our lives. Answer this rhetorical question. In your opinion, is it easier for God to fill you with his presence when you are at ground zero or when you are full of yourself? <laughs> When Saul, the murdering religious fanatic, reached a low point at the Damas on the Damascus Road, it became the starting point of the high calling of his life. Thirty seconds into the manifest presence of God converted the murderer named Saul into the martyr named Paul. But he had to come to a personal ground zero. He referred to this rapid change the rest of his heroic life. Ground zero has the potential to birth heroes. Have you been permanently changed by a ground zero in your life? Have you allowed God to birth heroic dreams and insatiable hunger for his presence through the pain and difficulty you've experienced in your life? If you yield to the Holy Spirit, he will elevate you to your high calling, using life's low points as a launching pad. Thank God. <laughs> Here's his prayer. Lord, I know you have given us powerful promises in your word concerning prosperity, victorious living, and divine health. I believe and receive every single promise you've made for us, yet my first response is to fall at your feet in weakness, frailty, humility, and worship. Every time I proclaim your word and standing on your promises, I will think of you first and bow at your feet as a living sacrifice. Thank you for every blessing from your hand. 
but my great, greatest need is to look upon your face and see your glory. And that is awesome. Spirit blessing. Uh, Spirit blessing from the heart of God says, I bless your spirit to come out of hiding. Spirit, your father designed your spirit, soul, and body, and he ordains and oversees their alignment. I speak to your slumbering spirit to wake up. It is safe. It is time. It is right to look outward and upward into the face of your father. Hear him say that you are accepted, affirmed, capable, and beloved in him. He likes the way he made you. He is not intimidated by areas in you that are lacking. He is perfectly sure of his ability to heal those areas, to restore broken places, to finish his parenting. I bless you in the name of the one who has given you great and precious promises. That's good. I take that. I bless you in the names of God. I bless you in the name of Jehovah Sitkanu, your righteousness. Spirit, I bless you with an uncompromising lifestyle based on what Jesus would do because he is living in you to do your Father's good and perfect will. I bless you with life-giving righteousness, wisdom, and justice in dealing with everybody. I bless you with doing the right thing from your inner motivation to please your Father. I bless you with a heart that fights for and shepherds others, particularly your family. I bless you with looking past their outward behavior and going to their hearts, going for their hearts to heal and restore, to affirm and to validate. Yay. Okay. And little Max in the mix. April 10th. His broken heart. When he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them and because they were hurting and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I can't understand it. I honestly cannot. Why did Jesus die on a cross? Oh, I know. I know. I have heard the official answers to gratify the law, to fulfill prophecy, and these answers are right. They are. But there is something more here, something very compassionate, something very, something yearning, something personal. What is it? Could it be that his heart was broken for all the people who cast despairing eyes toward the dark heavens and cry the same? Why? Could it be that his heart was broken for the hurting? I imagine him bending close to those who hurt. I imagine him listening. I picture his eyes misting and a pierced hand brushing away the tear. He who also was once alone understands. He who also once was alone understands. So that's just another testament to the, the scripture that talks about how he suffered all points as we do. Only more so, I think, in that statement alone. I mean, because, you know, we, a lot of, you know, we, we have loneliness, but we're never alone. Jesus was alone on that cross. That's what made it all happen. God had to turn his back on him, turn his back on the sin. I mean, he, he was alone. We have never been alone. There, you know, uh, it may have felt like it many times, and and every, you all know what I'm talking about. But we've never really been alone. Jesus has been alone, uh, and that's uh, I think that's cool. I, I'm not that he was alone, <laughs> but that you know, uh, it's just another uh, it's just another uh, confirmation of God's word. You know that he has suffered all points, even more so. I think. Uh, but anyway, God bless your day. It's good to be back. Uh, God's mercies are new. I love you, Mom. And God bless your day. Uh, people get around folks that make you feel good, that love you, that see the good in you, not the bad in you, like my mom. She sees the good in me. That's all she sees. God bless her. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye.